I remember the first time I traveled with Tyrese, went to Boston, standing in the hotel lobby, and uh, you know, it was the end of July, beginning of August, so you know, a lot of families arriving in the hotel. You know, you're seeing all the parents and all the children, well, some of them young adults, right? You know, coming in, so it's always interesting to watch this interaction because the, the parents have to be managing the younger children who are running all over the place. The young adults want to be cool and think they don't want to walk with their parents. You know, they're walking a little way behind. They want to be seen with their parents and they go in and check in. The parents, when they check in, well, of course, they're handling the, the smaller ones. The young adults just collecting their room keys and like, you know, whatever, I'm out of here. And they go off with their friends, go and hang out. And for, during that time, you know, I'm, I'm just taking all this with Tyrese and looking at him and thinking that, you know, he might never be doing that. In the evening, head out into the town, seeing all these young adults, linemen, hanging out by the bar, in the restaurants. I was like, wait, hey boy. I'm really out of my league here. You know, everywhere I turn, only these sort of young people, you know, like, there's no room for me here again, or what? Now, you might want to know why I'm explaining this, because that sounds like that is what will happen in any hotel around vacation time, right? But the only difference is this is not a vacation resort hotel. This was a business hotel. And we were actually there for a conference. The National Down Syndrome Congress Conference. And all those young adults who were in the restaurants and in bars and all over having fun were adults with Down Syndrome. So you know, coming from Trinidad and seeing this for the first time just blew my mind. Because when my son was born, all the experts, they were very kind when they told me this, right? But they told me all about all the things he would not be able to do. You know, to prepare me. First they told me that you are sorry. They, they were sorry that he was born with Down syndrome and that he might not be able to talk. He might not be able to walk. He might not have good muscle tone. He really basically might not be able to do much. So picture me as a father, waiting, no, I was going to have a son. Man, I'm just waiting to do all the things that a father would want to do with a son. And then they come and given me this long story of all the things he wouldn't be able to do. Yeah, most of me died right there and then. But flashback to standing in that hotel lobby and seeing all these children with Down syndrome doing all the things that they told me my son wouldn't be able to do. So am I in some kind of false reality here? How is that possible? It's the same Down syndrome. It wasn't a different strain. So I had to find out more, especially meeting more parents and hanging out, of course, with those same young adults discussing politics relationships, love, everything, and trying to keep my mouth closed. You know, thinking, that we're not really talking to somebody with Down syndrome here. And then just looking at Tyrese every time and thinking, oh, that future that they painted for me, oh, this is going to be so different. Came back from that conference, you know, brimming with excitement, telling all the parents, hey, listen, your child could go to school, a regular school. 
you know. They could get married, they could live independently, they could work, they could drive a car. And those parents looking at me like, oh, all right, Glenn went to one conference and he totally lost it. Because, <laughs> I mean, if anybody came back and told me that, I seriously would have thought that they lost it. Probably a song like Columbus. Hey, you know, we could keep sailing and discover a brand new world. And everybody looking at them, yeah, yeah, you go and sail by yourself, Dred, and fall off the edge, right? And that's how they looked at me. But you see, I saw it. I sat with them. I danced with them at the, the, the conference dances. So I realized it was real. So I kept that dream and changed my whole mindset of what a person with Down syndrome is supposed to be like, supposed to act like, everything that they told me. I wiped that slate clean. And I said, let this boy show me what he could do. And what I started to do, what we started to do, his mom and I, was create opportunities for him to show us. So we changed everything. Before, I used to do everything for him, right? I mean, I was a good parent. I have a special child. So I have to treat him special. I have to take care of him. I have to do everything for him to make sure that he's aware that he's loved and protected. But what I was really effectively doing is hindering his progress by doing that. And I only realized that when I took a step back and allowed him to do things to himself. And the amazing thing was that he could do it. So that conference was a real wow factor for me. Some of the parents actually believed in what I was saying. They probably thought I was kind of over the top. You know, when I talk about secondary school and university and getting married and all of that, but they still kind of believed in me, so we decided to come together and form an organization called the Down Syndrome Family Network. And through that network, one, we'll fight for the human rights of persons with Down Syndrome. We will educate people about their potential. And we will empower the parents and help them to change their mindset about what the future of their kids would be like so they could empower their kids. So we started. And up came the experts again. No, your children will not be able to attend school. They will not be able to fit in, in the school. They will not be able to keep up with the academics. They can't communicate. How will they communicate with the children? And what are, you, what are you talking about socialization and inclusion? If they can't communicate with them, how they will make friends? They'll be ostracized. They'll be bullied. It's a waste of time. It will not work. So, you know, we bow our head. I don't have a tail. I probably ought to stick my tail between my leg and slink away. But then every time I look at my son and what he was doing, I was like, oh, hell no. And then I remember every time I attended the conferences, those young adults that I interacted with, and everything that they said, imagine discussing Obama's election strategy with a group of young adults with Down syndrome. I was like, no way, man. And that actually happened. Who was pro-Hillary? Who was pro-Obama? And sitting on there with them and, and watching the interaction. And, and I was like, no. So we started pushing a little harder. And... Eventually, the government 
sign and ratify the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Well, that, that was a huge, huge success for us when that was done. Because then that kind of put a little crack in the door so we could stick our foot in and say, right. Because now they have to start recognizing the rights of persons with Down syndrome and other disabilities. And we started to push a little harder. So we have these international conferences in March to celebrate World Down Syndrome Day. We have workshops during the year. And we have, of course, the Body Walk in Down Syndrome Awareness Month, month of October which is the largest inclusive walk in the Caribbean. So you think we are making strides, right? We have received international awards. In 2014, we were recognized by Down Syndrome International based in the UK. In 2016, we received uh, the President's Award from the National Down Syndrome Congress based in the US. And we recently received the Points of Light Award from the head of the Commonwealth, Her Majesty the Queen. So things would be perfect, right? Here we are looking up, but yet still, the experts, they are pushing us back. What can people with disabilities really offer society? We see that they are always left behind. And it's your fault. Because everybody talks about society has to change, right? But we are society. And if we don't change, nothing else will change. So we are advocating for policy and legislation for persons with disabilities. That will give them, you know, a little teat to fight for their rights. And everybody always asks, what, why do you need a law? Why do you need policies? They don't abide by it anyway. It won't help your situation in any way. Nothing will change. Yeah, but I always say, give me that law and I'll show you what will change. Just like they say, money wouldn't make you happy. But um, if one of you all leaving, you all could leave some money for me at the front, I'll show you how happy I'll be. All right? <laughs> because we see what happens with laws. How many of you all buckle up when driving now? How many of you all, with the nice fast cars, all of a sudden driving really slow? And how many of us, carnival is around the corner, Christmas is around the corner, and you're getting a designated driver? all because of legislation. So we need that legislation. The only other thing I want to help with is before those policies are come into effect, there's this nice thing they call public consultations. But very few members of the public attend. And especially considering that's a consultation for persons with disabilities, None of all you have any disabilities, so you might think, why should I attend? But the thing about having a disability is that anybody could become disabled at any point in time through illness, through accident, it could be anything. I've had some friends that they lived their entire lives and because of an illness, they lost their vision or they lost their hearing, or they lost their mobility. And so that is something that would affect all of us at some point. If it's not a family member, it could be a friend, and we should be interested in exactly what they put in that policy, because a weak policy will lead to a weak legislation, and then weak legislation means discrimination against human rights. So when I think back on when my son was born and all the things they told me that he would not do, and I think about all the things that he does now, I realize that the future 
is in good hands. Tyrese Niles. Thank you.